How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Shutter Magazine. This is number seven for December 2022. And for those of you guys who are new to this magazine, Shudder is a black and white, classically styled anthology horror comic. Uh, each time around, you're going to get six stories, and a lot of them will feature old school, classic elements reinvented in a new way. And if we can tell from this cover, we're in for kind of an old school, classic monsters, monster mash story. And yeah, we get the, the cover image of Dracula fighting a wolfman. We also get a, another ode to the classic Universal Monsters. But then there's also a bunch of really cool things. Uh, World War II Germans fighting old school voodoo zombies. Gangsters fighting vampires. As well as an Area 51 story and a Jin story. Lots and lots of crazy fun stuff here. If you like old school horror comics, definitely check this out. Also, if you like The Creeps, that was this magazine before a name change. And if you like Vampirus Carmella, a lot of the same people that worked on that magazine worked on this one as well. So if you like either of those other two, or if you like just classic horror in general, definitely recommend checking this out. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. We're going to take a closer look at this magazine, and I'll show you guys a little bit of each story. I won't be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to show you guys a little bit of what's in this book. You know, give you an idea what to expect. So without further ado, let's switch to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Shudder Magazine number 7. Let's bring this closer to the camera. We can see a logo in a nice red color in order to match Dracula's uh, sash. Well, technically this is a different vampire in the story, but more on that in a little bit. And we can see on the bottom here, the epic battle of the beast. See page 7. Yeah. The very first story is the cover, cutting right to the chase and getting into the cool monster battle. But in addition to the cool monsters fighting, we get classic iconic tombstones and a nice little light source of an old school lantern on the bottom. But overall, good cover. I mean, another case of worth buying for the cover alone, especially if you are classic monster fans. Really, really cool. And the signature on the bottom uh, Saint Julian, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, cracking this open, we can see uh, Auntie Fearsome's fable. Auntie's Fearsome Fables. Uh, this time around, she's talking about voodoo zombies, and we get this little bit about how voodoo practitioners would use zombie powder to revive the dead into a, a semi-living state. And then it talks about how that's different from modern zombies, but says that, you know, voodoo zombies are rooted in true stories. So, of course, watch out when you sleep for the zombies. And it is kind of interesting looking up the true stuff about zombie powder, but uh, that's a whole nother thing. Maybe, uh, maybe later. Uh, Wes Craven did a movie on it, The Serpent in the Rainbow. Very underrated. Go check it out. Although the movie is mostly fiction, but still really good. Uh, anyway, after that, we get the, uh, the opening credits and the contents. Uh, so we get Dear Aunt Shudder, that's the letters page. Battle of the Beast, that's the cover one. The Lost Patrol, The Monster Maker, Area 51, the Undeadables, and the Djinn. And we get some cool little images hinting at what will happen in the stories. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into that first story. Once again, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, uh, so I'll be avoiding all the twists and stuff, but I want to show you guys the setup for each of these stories and give you guys just a little taste as to... Uh, what's to come. Obviously, uh, first off, the letters page, we get Aunt Shudder on the stamp there, and this quote, I just devoured the latest Shudder, and it was putrid, revolting, and disgusting. In other words, I loved it. 
Anyway, after that, story number one, the title story, and this one is The Battle of the Beast. And we get a sort of uh, flash forward, and we see a vampire and a werewolf battling it out. But how did we get here? Well, it turns out they were born as twins. However, uh, they were inseparable back in the day. They really loved each other, and they uh, were really good friends. So why would they fight in the future? Well, it seems like even though they were inseparable, uh, eventually their uh, f their family died, and with it they lost their fortune, and then they met some beautiful woman. However, the two women that they met weren't actually just beautiful women, but a vampire and a werewolf, which left the two of them transformed into their respective creatures. And I really do like this next... Uh, this next little montage here where they see the advantages and disadvantages of each species. You know, the vampire has more powers but also more weaknesses and the werewolf, you know, will be relatively normal most of the time and only get to be a monster a little bit so it's like not as much monster powers but more of a normal life, you know, so we get this one scene like the guy uh, as a werewolf was hoping to go after this victim, but his brother took it because there's a night every night, but there was still a few more nights to the full moon, you know, so they start to fight and they say our differences are too big, let's finally start to duke it out, and I won't spoil too much, but needless to say, this is a werewolf vampire fight scene it is pretty cool and it has a really fun ending as far as you know what siblings going to win I thought it had a really interesting idea at the end there so overall a really great story a really great cover adaptation and um, yeah it's just a really good beginning you know classic monster fighting after that, we get the Lost Patrol, and there's a bunch of tanks, and they're trying to get to the right spot. These are World War II Germans, so automatically, bad guys that we want to get their comeuppance. But it turns out their radio is damaged, they can't call for help, and they're in Africa, and they meet this guy up ahead, and one of them can translate, and the translator is going to say, um... This guy is saying, you can't drive your tank here. These are sacred lands. Uh, don't, don't drive over it. And the uh, main bad guy will pull out his gun and just shoot him because he doesn't have time for this. However, the blood waters the ground and out of the ground are going to pop some zombies. And I've noticed this is actually a big trend lately, a whole bunch of World War II Germans either becoming zombies or fighting off zombies. For whatever reason, World War II zombies are a pretty hot commodity right now. But yeah, some pretty fun action in this scene as well. Uh, two, two big action stories to open up the book, and plus, because they're bad guys, it's fun to root for the side of the zombies. Overall, another fun story right off the bat, really going in hard with the fun cartoon element. After that, the Monster Maker, and we get some classic monsters here. And these are legally distinct Universal Monsters. They say the studio is Universe Studio, so not not Universal, but Universe Studio, and we get Boris Skarloff and Bella Vagosi and Lon Carney, so legally distinct versions of classic uh, monster movie stars, and it turns out this guy, their director, found them all on a European trip, and he's made them all into success with his special makeup work. And we get a reporter coming in, he, and the reporter is going to talk to all three of the actors about 
their experience working on the monster movies and oh isn't that makeup so uncomfortable what's it like to play these dark characters oh it's really not so bad but in a fun twist of events uh, this guy shows up and wants to uh, wants to be an apprentice wants to learn the monster makeup but he's brushed off and we see that these two characters are actually again legally distinct versions of Abbott and Costello so I do like that it's Abbott and Costello that are going to sort of be the foil of this story or really more just Costello that was always a fun thing though that you had the universal monsters and then towards the end there you just get Abbott and Costello running through and and, and being uh, pulling off some shenanigans there anyway after that we're at the Area 51 story. Always gotta love aliens and Area 51 stuff, you know, a real place with a ton of mystery behind it. Uh, but you get these kids and they're all slackers and they decide, hey, let's do something with our lives. Let's break into Area 51. And by the way, that character with the J is Joe. I do love that the artist, what's his name? Let's just give him a shirt with the first letter of his name, like he's Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks or something. But anyway, they hike through a bunch of desert and eventually find this strange, mysterious, uh, otherworldly-looking pyramid. And they get to the door. There's no way to get in, but it opens up for them. So they wander inside this mysterious building, and of course... The doors continue to let them farther and farther in. They see a room with a sign on it that has an alien's head. And of course, they're going to meet these really nasty looking aliens. How are they going to get out of this situation? Overall, a fun story. And when we find out what's going on here, again, a really fun ending to this as well. But who doesn't love some aliens? Anyway, after that... We get the mobsters versus vampire story, the undeadables, I guess like the untouchables. But you get this guy and he goes, the cops are after me and so is the mob boss. There's no way out. I'd rather die on my own terms and not get tortured before. So he kills himself. And as uh, we've learned, I think, was it Creeps or Carmella a bit ago where they did a whole story about how suicides could potentially turn you into vampires. So yeah, he killed himself to avoid the mob, and then we get the mobster saying, hey, I want a secret meeting with this cop character. They go in, they frisk him, and they sit down, and he says, what do you know about vampires, like in the movies? And we see him crawling out of the river and bearing his new fangs, and it turns out a bunch of these mobsters guys have been taken out by this vampire in an act of revenge and they did see him and they tried to shoot at him but yeah he's a vampire he isn't going to go down so easy so who is going to win in this fun face-off a supernatural creature or a mobster that doesn't like to lose you know and I do like a good kind of out of nowhere versus battle you know um, it's like, yeah, mobsters are a character, uh, so are classic monsters. Why not combine them? They don't usually get combined, and that's an interesting thought. Anyway, after that, we have the story, The Djinn, and looks like, uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt Shudder's kind of, like, making a glowing ball with her hands there, uh, but we get this guy that's beaten up in New York, uh, he is Middle Eastern, and it's post 9-11, so he's facing some racism, when a mysterious figure shows up and says that he's a djinn, and he first proves his abilities by healing all of his wounds. However, he knows better than to make a deal with the djinn. He, uh, apparently you have to lose your soul to it if you do, but we get him showing his powers. Here's a vision of those guys that just beat you up. I'm going to make a truck hit him. And we can see the tear in his face. You know, yeah, that's an act of revenge, but he's like, gee, I didn't want anyone to die. 
so he runs home only to find out that his girlfriend is in the hospital and he says okay if you make my girlfriend better I'll give myself over and they go on a bunch of havoc so yeah classic uh, classic evil spirit don't want to make a deal with them overall a fun story I think that one was kind of short I think they put the 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 shorter story at the very end there but overall another fun one you know that one was you know uh, pretty classic but lots of cool interesting reinventions in this book you know I like how we got two stories with the classic monster the battle of the beast story and then the universal-esque story but then we also got two versus stories in this issue you know uh, Germans versus voodoo zombies, not just zombies, but voodoo zombies, and we also got vampires versus mobsters. So overall, a pretty fun, kind of a wackier, over-the-top issue in those regards, and yeah, the others were fun as well, but uh, didn't really mirror each other. So anyway... Not that they have to, it just made it easier for me to talk about it, a transition. Anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Creeps slash Carmilla slash Shudder playlist. So basically, if you like this magazine and want to see me talk about a whole bunch more like it, I've done quite a few of these. I've covered a whole bunch of them. So if you want to see more, I have more down here in this playlist that should be popping up around now. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Uh, uh, Creeps, Shudder, Carmilla playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.